Hey guys, I want to show you how to install a Solaris 10 operating system on your Oracle VirtualBox application. So I'm going to go ahead and click New, and I'm going to create a new container called Solaris 10 x86. This is assuming you do have an ISO for Solaris or a DVD or CD, something like that, available, which you can download free from the Sun or Oracle site. I'm going to do 3 gigabyte RAM, I'm going to do virtual hard disk, VDI image, I'm going to do fixed size, and I'm going to raise that to about 40 gigabytes, a little extra space to play with zones and things like that. So I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, the virtual disk is now created. As you can see, my optical drive is empty. I need to attach my Solaris installation image there. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click Choose Desktop Image and I'm going to browse to backups and Solaris ISO and I now have it selected and now I can go ahead and start my boot up and we'll make sure that it finds this ISO image Solaris 10 right there this will be much quicker than using a traditional DVD optical drive I'll do an interactive installation and we'll be back at the next screen. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and click English and to continue. This should be familiar if you've done an Oracle Solaris installation before. English again, keep everything nice and simple. I'm going to choose Networked. I'm going to choose DHCP. I do not need IPv6 or Kerberos. I don't need extra name service. I'm going to use the name service by my, by my global uh, system here that I'm building this zone, this uh, virtual box on. Geographic location, Pacific, United States, and Pacific for my particular time zone. Enter a root password. Click Next. I do not need remote services on this machine and I don't want to register at this time. I don't need proxies and we're ready to continue. Alright, let's go ahead and click Next. I do want to reboot automatically and specify the media. I will leave it as this because it already knows where that ISO image is and I'll be back to you in just a minute. Now I do want to do a custom install here. I want to adjust my disk space a little bit and things like that. I'm going to choose North America, my default keyboard. No web start additional parts and I'm going to go ahead and do a entire group, just the default packages here. And available disk is the virtual disk. I'll just click Next now you can see I have about 41 gigabytes of disk space I definitely want to customize that so I'm gonna click modify I do not need 32 gigabytes of export home available I'm gonna lower that to 4 gigabyte because I want all the extra space for zones later so now I'll click continue and it's going to install this rather quickly because we are working on, on an an I all right, that's already finished installing here. It just took about five to six minutes. And we're now going to click continue past a few screens here. And then we're going to have it reboot. And we'll see what it looks like here. Continue. And it's going to reboot.
Now before we reboot, we do want to remove that optical drive disk or else it was going to boot off an install again, which we don't want it to do. So I just clicked on that and I clicked Remove Optical Drive. Now we can go ahead and start the system normally. And this is what it should look like with the installation almost complete. We're going to see how this boots here. It may have a few issues at first. The host name is unknown, as you can see. Loading the SMF service levels, which is part of Solaris 10. And because there's no host name, we may have a few errors pop up until I get that set shortly. Creating your keys. And we're at the desktop. I'm going to go log in. Choose my regular Java system here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to Launch, Applications, Utilities, set up my terminal. And I do want to disable the desktop login for the future. So I'm going to go to user dt bin, dt means desktop, and dt config dash d for disable, and you can go ahead and put a dash e there to put it back. So next time the desktop will not start. I do want to set up my host names real quick, so I'm going to go to the Etsy host file. I'll call it Solaris test is going to be this machines name and I'll also touch the Etsy node name and I'll call it Solaris test also in those two spots. Now I will reboot and the machine should then have its host name also. Okay now I want to set up some zones and I'll just simply call these zone 1, zone 2, and zone 3 right under root. So if you take a look here, none of them exist yet. I'm going to make directory zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. I'm going to chmod 700 to make these permissible to create zones with. And those are now set up. We're now going to just see that we only have one global zone on the system. That is our global zone and it is running right now. So we are going to use the zone CFG command to create, to start the process of creating your zone. And it's telling you that you have to use the create command. We are going to set our zone path to zone 1 because we are creating zone 1 right now. I will set auto boot to true so it'll come back up quickly. I don't need to deal with network right now. I'm going to add a file system. I'll go into the file system subset. I'm going to set directory as zone 1. Set the disk paths here. I'll use slice 4. I do still need to set this up using the format command, which I will do next. And we're setting up the raw slice also. Dev R disk. C0, T0, D0, S4. And we'll set type just for simplicity as UFS. And we can end to get out of this subset of the file system area. And we can even verify and commit. And then exit. So we've begun to set up the zone. Let's clear this out. 
and we want to go into the disk setup, our only disk on the machine, virtual disk. We're going to go to the partition section and we're going to print and look at the partitions here. You can see that 4, 5, and 6 are unassigned. I was going to use those for my disks. So let's go ahead and choose 4. Unassigned here. We're going to start with a cylinder 67 because as you can see it ends here at 66 and then there's a gap until 3600. And I will just do an estimate of 5 gigabyte for that slice 4 and I will label to make that partition persistent. Now if we again print the partitions we now have a 5 gigabyte on slice 4. Let's go ahead and do that with the rest of them while we're at it. Slice 5, I went to 719 cylinder so I'm going to start at 720 and keep growing up and I'm going to give it a 6 gigabyte for partition 5. I'm going to label it continue yes let's look at it and I'll leave it like that so we have 5 gigabyte for slice 4 6 gigabyte for slice 6 quit quit and we're ready to continue with the zone alright so let's see if we can now install the zone we have created it we've set some of the variables such as file system and now we're gonna back out of that zone and we're going to the basic root, root prompt and we're gonna use the zone ADM dash Z telling it which zone and the install command and here it is creating a list of files to build the mini OS on that zone and I won't let you sit through all this stuff here I'll be back in just a minute now the, there is much more complexity involved to the zone configurations that you can do but this install was successful and we can again use a zone ADM command dash Z to tell it which zone. My zone is called zone 1 and the directory is also called zone, zone 1 just for consistency and you can just use a boot flag and that's going to boot up your zone in here. Then we're going to go to the very original command that we used at the start and we're going to see if we can see that zone now running. So again we're going to use the zone list and now you can see we added a zone one it is running you have your global which every Solaris 10 will come with and we created a zone one with a directory of slash zone one under root that is the very basics of how to create a zone on Solaris 10 let's do one more quick refresher now we're gonna make one more zone so we're gonna go zone config and you want your zone name. I'm going to call the next one zone 2. I'm going to use the create command. It tells you that. You have to start with the create command. I'm going to set the zone path of zone 2. Set auto boot true. Again, I'm going to skip the network side for now. I'm going to set the directory. For zone 2, and we're going to use slice 5 instead of slice 4 this time, and we're going to set the raw side also. Excuse my fingers. And we're also going to set the type. And that should be it for the file system. That's just a basic setup there. And we're going to verify. We're going to commit. And we're going to exit. Next, we are going to again install zone number two with the install command and it is again successful here. Note that you did have to do a new FS, a new file system on your raw slices 4 and 5 before you do this otherwise it's not going to accept that file system. So you will need to do that also. You can see how very quick this is to create the entire zone.
Now that this is complete, we'll do a zone ADM dash Z zone two boot and we'll see if it comes up. That does look good. We'll do a zone CFG list and we'll see if we see all three zones now, including the global. Wrong command here. Sorry about that. So we're going to go back to the zone ADM. List verbose. And now we do have two zones running. So that concludes this very basic tutorial just to get you started on installing Solaris on Oracle VirtualBox and just making a couple small zones to play with. Thanks for watching.